Okay, so the learning goal for this video is to find the equation of a periodic function. Uh, so you should be able to, by the end of this video, look at a graph that looks like this and come up with the equation that produced that graph. Uh, now, looking at this, we can see that it's obviously a periodic function. Now, it could be a sine curve or it could be a cosine curve. Uh, you can actually come up with either a sine uh, equation or a cosine equation for this problem. Uh, I'm going to assume it's a cosine question. Uh, we'll talk about why in a minute. But if it is a cosine question, we can say that the general form of this equation will be y equals a cosine b bracket x plus c plus d. Uh, so that's our general form of a periodic equation. We really just need to know what the a value, the b value, the c value, and the d value is for this equation. Uh, so let's get started here. A uh, couple of things to note here. We can see that it's got a maximum here, and it's got a maximum up to here of 6. Okay, so the, a, a max of 6. We can see that it's got a minimum down here, and if we move over here, we can see that that's a minimum of 2. Okay, so this periodic function oscillates between a max of 6 and a minimum of 2. Uh, now, from that information, we can find out what the centre is, what, what we would call the median of this periodic function is. We can do that by adding 6 and 2, so 6 plus 2 is 8, and dividing it by 2, that gives us the middle, which is 4. Now, that middle is how far this function has moved up, because remember, periodic functions uh, well, at least the most simple periodic functions happen about the x-axis. So this one has moved up from the x-axis to 4. Now that's represented by our d value. So straight away we can see that our d value is 4. So we've already got a piece of the puzzle here. We know that this equation is y equals a cos b x plus c plus 4. Okay, so that's one piece. It should be pretty straightforward now to look at the amplitude. Now remember the amplitude is the distance from the center to the top, or from the center to the bottom. Obviously they're gonna be the same. So the distance from four to six, we can see that the distance from there to there is two. That means that our A value here is going to be two. So we've got a second piece of our puzzle here. Y equals two, cos b x plus c plus 4. Alright, we're halfway there now. We know that the a value is 2 and the d value is 4. We just need a b and a c value. It doesn't matter which one you do first here. I'm going to do the c value. Now, at the very beginning of this video, I said I was going to assume it was a cosine curve. Now, you should remember, I'm just going to have a little bit of a scribble down here, you should remember that a cosine curve starts at the top, moves down, back, and back up to the top again. Now, I assumed that this was a cosine curve because I wanted to start from here, move down, and back up to the top again. So here's my starting position. Now, if the C value was zero, the starting position would be zero, it would be here. But the C value has actually moved it over, you can see it's moved it over one space. So that means that our C value is negative one. Remember that our C value does the opposite of what you would expect. If it's moved one space to the right, it means that our C value is negative one. Okay, so the distance from our origin to our starting position is one. Therefore, our C value is negative 1. Y equals 2 cos B X minus 1 plus 4. Now, interestingly, I could have also chose for this to be a sine curve. If I did decide that this was a sine curve, remember that sine curves look more like this. They start from the middle. They move up to the top, come back, 
back to the middle again. That's what a sine curve looks like. So that would have started from here. Now if it started from here, that means that it's actually moved to back from the center, from the start, from the y-axis. That's two, you can see. So if this was a sine curve, our C value would have been positive two. Okay, so whether it was a sine curve or a cosine curve, that's really up to you. I just selected cosine curve because it looked like it was going to be easier to deal with. Okay, finally, this part, this is really the only bit that requires any real maths. Uh, we need to find out what our B value is. Now remember that when it comes to our B value, the way that we solve for our B value is with this formula. Period equals 2 pi divided by B. Okay, so period equals 2 pi divided by B. That's going to be our formula. Now, we can't find B directly from our graph, but what we can find is the period, the time it takes for this graph to repeat itself. So you can see it starts here, it comes down, all the way down to the bottom, and then it comes back up to the top again. Now, the time it takes for that to happen is from 1 to 13. So 13 minus 1, it takes 12 units for that to happen. So the period of this graph is 12. You could have counted that from any space. You could have started from here. See, so you start here, you go up, down, back up to the starting position. That's negative 2, that's 10. So the distance from there to there is 2 plus 10, 12. So no matter which way you measure this, the period is going to be 12. So 12 equals 2 pi on b. And then it's just a matter of solving that. So we can see that if I move my b up to here, and I move my 12 down to there, Now if I simplify that, I'll get b equals pi on 6. 2 pi on 12, 2 divided by 12 is 1 on 6, so it's going to be pi on 6. This happens very, very regularly with this kind of stuff. Uh, things often have a period of 12 or a period of 24. Uh, things like the tides or um, anything that happens on a daily basis might have a, a something that looks like this. Okay, so B value is pi on 6. That's really the end of this thing here. Y equals 2 cos... Our B value is pi on 6. And then we end up with X minus 1, that's our C value, plus 4. Okay, so we've really gone through a very systematic approach here. The first thing we did was find our D value by finding our center. The second thing we did was find our A value by finding our amplitude. The next thing we did was finding our C value by finding how much our function had shifted by. And then the very last thing we did was do this little bit of maths here. Because we knew what the period was, we could put it into this formula, period equals 2 pi on B, and then solve it b equals pi on 6 and put that into there. A really systematic approach. Uh, if you use that, you shouldn't have too much problems trouble coming up with an equation uh, from a graph.